In this video, we will build an ideal op-amp model. In the tutorial, you saw that the ideal op-amp can be modeled as a voltage-dependent voltage source. So we're going to build that op-amp model and then verify that that is correct. Go to File, New Schematic. And to place down that voltage source, it's not voltage, but the one that we always put down. You're actually going to look for E or E2. And you'll see in the description it says voltage-dependent voltage source. So that's what we're looking for. And now you'll see that the only difference between these two is the location of the plus and minus terminals. I prefer E2 because I like the minus terminal on top. So I'm going to plop that down. So an ideal op-amp, there's only two inputs and a single output. So we're, that's all we'll need to worry about. So you want to make sure that you change your port type to input if it's an input and port type to output if it's an output. So here this is V minus. Port type input V plus. Port type output V out. And I need a ground. Alright, so there isn't that much going on in this sub-circuit, but I wanted to draw your attention to uh, one thing, which was if you go to Tools, Control Panel, Save Defaults, you'll see here that I have Save Sub-Circuit Node Voltages and Save Sub-Circuit Device Currents checked. If you've just downloaded this, it's uh, very likely that your default values have this unchecked. Go ahead and check them and then save and then I'll show you why. So I'm going to put down this shunt resistor here. And um, all right, so I think we've got our schematic complete. So now we need to build the symbol. To do that, go to hierarchy. Now I'm not going to start from scratch. If you go to open the sheet symbol, it'll automatically generate one for you. It may not have the ideal shape, but we can change that. So hit yes. Now we can just move some things around. Uh, so like I said, I like the V plus terminal up top. So I'm going to move v, min or v plus up top. And we don't want this box. We want a triangle. So go to draw line. And I want this box to match up there and I'll move these so they're just slightly further apart okay and I think that's done uh, so now what we want to do is go back to your schematic and you want to save it so go file save as you don't want to save it as just op amp one word all lowercase because that is how LT spice defines op amp and it will not let you save your symbol uh, I just I ran into this problem so make sure you give it a unique name like my underscore ideal op amp and then if you go to your uh, symbol, you need to save it with the exact same name in the same place. So that was my underscore ideal underscore op amp. Alright, open the sheet symbol and you got it. Alright, so now that it's saved, go ahead and exit out of both of those start a new schematic and now we're going to place that part down so lt spice should show you the folder where you've saved it my ideal op amp there it is and put down a voltage source so you gotta go back up to your top directory where all your lt spice defined parts live And I'll give this a label of V out. And I'll go ahead and label this V minus node up here as V in. 
And that's just to make it easy on us when we want to do our gain calculation that we can specify that algebraic expression as v out divided by v of v in. All right, so now before we run it, I'm just gonna double check the schematic. So when you wanna check the schematic or the subcircuit of a symbol, you can right click and it'll give you the option of either opening the symbol or opening the schematic. So I'm gonna open the schematic. So I've got my v plus terminal labeled, my v minus terminal label, got my v out. What I haven't done is set the gain. So an ideal op amp has infinite gain, but we uh, can't specify infinite gain in LT space. But what we can do is just choose an absurdly large gain. I mean, one meg is considered, but let's just go ahead and do 10 meg. So I'm gonna do a capital M E G, or you could do 10 E six. Those are both the same thing. Save it, exit. And so now this should have a gain of 10 meg. Now let's specify our voltage. Let's say we give it a voltage of one volt. So what do you think the output's gonna be? Well, according to that tutorial, we have that V out is equal to V plus minus V minus that difference multiplied by the gain, which is 10 meg. So V plus is at zero volts. So we're gonna have zero minus one, which is equal to negative one, multiplied by 10 meg. So the voltage that we see on the output should be negative 10 megavolts. Let's run a transient analysis and confirm that. Stop time, do one millisecond, or V out, negative 10 millivolts. Uh, so it's exactly what we said. If you wanted to get an expression for the gain, and I'm gonna change the voltage here so that it makes it just a little bit easier, um, because it's one dividing by one kind of leaves it the same. So let's do like 3.5 and run it again. So now we're at negative 35 megavolts, which is what we should see. But if we wanted to see what the gain was, you're going to right click on this V of V out that you see up top. And you're going to change that algebraic expression to plot from V of V out to V of V out divided by V of V in. And that's only going to work if you've labeled this node. Uh, if you haven't labeled that node, you would have to click on this to see what that node was called and then divide it by the name of that node. Okay. And so here you can see, even though our voltage is 3.5, rather than getting 35 megavolts, we're getting negative 10. We're getting our, our uh, gain to be negative 10. And it's only negative because we have our voltage source tied to the inverting terminal. So we've confirmed that we've got our ideal op amp working, which is great. So now let's see, let's see about that 10 ohm resistor that I put in there. If we right click on the symbol, you can go to open symbol or open schematic. So I'm concerned about that resistor, so I'm gonna go open schematic. And what I wanna do is see the current dissipated. So the current flowing through that device is, let's go ahead and get rid of this. It's a uh, negative 3.5 mega amps. Which makes sense. Because you're gonna have the voltage of negative 35 megavolts divided by 10, which is gonna give you 3.5 mega amps. Um, and now remember that if you didn't save your control panel preferences, your defaults, to click these, you wouldn't be able to probe your sub-circuit. And that's the only reason why I added that shunt resistor, was to show you that you can probe internally into a sub-circuit during simulation. Go ahead and exit out of that. And I'll save this as ideal test. That way you guys have it in the download folder.